Thank you for having me. And um, what I want to share this morning is um, just my little story. Um, in 2017, um, I was working, living life as we all do, and I was 57 years old, and I had a stroke. And that stroke landed me in the hospital, and it, um, um, I got an MRI, which also show, um, showed that I had white matter disease, which is um, uh, the subcortical uh, fine, fine vessels in your brain, deep within your brain, um, were having, having little strokes. And they're not TIAs, they're actually stroke strokes. And so all of that combined, um, I tried to work another year after that. Um, and it was that stroke, that frontal lobe stroke that kind of really kicked my butt. So I had to, my doctor took me off work because people with vascular dementia um, and all dementias, I'm, I'm sure, um, you got to keep your blood pressure down. You've got to take care of that cholesterol. You've got to um, try to live a stress-free life. And um, when you're working and you're shuffling um, kind of a busy job, I worked for the Department of Homeland Security and I was a program analyst. So it was just constantly numbers and um, different programs that I had to do reports on. I just, I was unable to do it. I was finding myself just kind of sitting in my office and putting out fires, just quick things that had to be done, um, which isn't really fair to the people that are receiving the information on the other side. So anyhow, um, I retired, medically retired, and um, my neurologist told me to, with the brain like that, go home and live your life. The way I found TIPA was um, I was trying to learn about it, and so I was on YouTube, you know, you type in dementia, and actually she comes up, and so I was, I was listening to her things and just fell in love with her, and then um, had the opportunity to actually meet her in Michigan at a conference that um, a few of us spoke at. So um, I don't know. It's just um, starts out really, really heavy. And with a little bit of searching and a little bit of camaraderie, um, you can you can learn that everything on the web is not necessarily true. I've met people that have been dealing with dementia for years and years and years and years. And so you, you get hope. It gives you hope when you're with um, like kind folks. It sounds like the, the community that you found online has been a really valuable safe space. The advocacy work that folks with dementia for folks um, that have dementia is just amazing. And also, I mean, I was never a public speaker, never. And through this group of friends that I've met out here that are advocates for those living with dementia and living well with dementia, um, you know, lost that train of thought, sorry. <laughs> that the, happens. The people that you met, have they inspired you in a way to be an advocate and to oh, share your story? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's important. You know, my biggest thing is the stigma and I did the self stigma in the beginning. And um, I, I really hope that that changes. And I think by telling your story and um, most people, as you know, go directly to end stage Mm -hmm. And they, they don't really take a look at, there's all this living to do. Um, and one thing I do want to bring up is for the care partners out there, keep, you know, let your person be as independent as they possibly can. I know my daughter's an RN and she swooped in and she was going to, you know, take care of everything. And we ended up having a family meeting. So we were all at the table at the same time. And I brought my psychologist to my home 
And we kind of just said, okay, er, put the brakes on. Um, I know that they're all dealing with, you know, their denial and their grief and their change of their mom. And, um, but I just needed them to know that I want to be independent, as independent as possible. So, so that brings us to the next topic because you've created this tool for your family. Yes. To help guide them through this journey to understand things about you and and what you want and what you think you'll need as you progress. Right. Um, So as most folks that get a diagnosis of dementia, um, oftentimes you basically just hear, go, go live your life or go get your affairs in order. And um, I, I actually panicked and um, after seeing what's on the internet and I did, I um, created this little binder and I call it um, graduation from earth school. And what it is, is basically um, my power of attorney for healthcare, my, um, my will, my state um, end of life registry, um, which shows exactly how I want to, um, my choices for late stage. Um, so my family doesn't have to make them. Um, they're made, they're done. And um, I didn't want that burden to be on them as far as, well, you know, I think she'd want this or I think she'd want that. Um, I've got all of my beneficiary forms. I've got, um, let's see, my long-term um, healthcare policy, just every little thing that I could think of that they would need to um, have access to and easily without trying to find someone to help them with phone numbers and this and that and the other thing. So um, I put that together as a gift to my family and um, I update it as need be, or when I, you know, change something, I take the old out and put the new in. And um, I don't know, I just suggest that um, don't run home and do that right away, kind of be in yourself and um, know that there is actually, there's life after diagnosis, but um, consider, you know, when you are putting your affairs in order, just kind of make it simple and easy for your loved ones. And um, so they're not having to make those hard decisions. Yeah, because I think, you know, families, it's hard enough. And so this might take a little bit of the stress off. Now you said that you gave this um, as a gift. Do you think that your family received it as a gift or were they kind of like, mom? <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I think so. I, it I sounds really like do. you guys have been really open about communicating what's happening for you and them. Right, too, right, so. right. Yeah, I mean, and it's in the office in a certain place all the time. Um, so it just it just makes it really simple for them. Um, you know, I mean, if I were to have another stroke today and was nonverbal, they can they can go to the book and figure some things out. Um, you know. What about personal likes and dislikes? Does your your guidebook include things like your favorite types of music or texture? You know, do you like things with V-necks or do you like turtlenecks? Exactly. Um, no, I don't have that in there, but I have it on my list to put in there because I have learned That wasn't something I even thought about, but I have learned from others that, yeah, that is so important, Um, you know, so you're not given beats if you don't like beats. Um, Not that every facility has the opportunity to, you know, go through all of that and and know, but if they follow TIPA's kind of program, 
you know, you get a little more one-on-one -on -one with the same person, um, that kind of a thing. But um, yes, that is an important tool that needs to go in there. Yeah. I, I also think that, um, you know, as families, if you have a loved one in a facility, you still end up meeting a lot of their needs or at least trying to. Um, so having some of that personal stuff, if there's a particular situation that somebody's trying to figure out, if somebody's in distress and you know that they really like chenille blankets, maybe you bring in a chenille blanket and that could be something that's calming for them. So that's just a small example of why it's really important to know yes. as a family what the likes and the dislikes are. Yes. Um, and of course, being flexible with all of it. I've loved eggs my whole life, but who knows if I'm going to hate them one day, you know? <laughs> right. So, no, I think that's, that's such a great idea. And I have learned that it's on my list. Um, and I, I just think that that needs to be with anyone, you know, in a hospital setting or, um, you know, that kind of a, or a, or a long-term care facility. So did you partner with any legal professionals or just with your family to sort of figure out what are all of the parts and pieces that I want to include in this book? I did not do the, um, you know, other than a will, I did not do the whole legal thing. Um, my state here in Montana is pretty, um, pretty straightforward. You just go online and you do your end of life registry. Um, it's registered with the state. It's on your driver's license. It's on, um, you know, it's in my little book. And those are the hard decisions, you know. Um, I'm not sure we, we want to talk about those on, on this particular call. Well, we, we do call them challenging conversations. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. But they're, they're the things that I chose under certain circumstances, you know, no feeding tubes, no this, no that. And, um, and those are the, those are the hard things I didn't want my family to have to make because yeah. it's already done. That, that's really the main thing. The rest is just kind of like easy peasy. Um, I can call, you know, for long-term care and find out what all we need to do. But that registry really is, is the key to the book. My choices and not heavy hearted for my family to have to make them. Right. And, and they have access to it now. So yep, you guys can think about it and talk about it and, and figure it out and work it out now yep. so that yeah. everybody's prepared. Um, yeah. It's, it's hard enough. Um, I have a little bit of a different background. I lost my father to brain cancer 13 years ago. And I remember being so shocked by, even though I was prepared for all the things that were gonna happen and knew that we were gonna lose him, I was so thankful that we didn't have to make any of those big decisions because it had already been done. Losing him was hard enough. Hard enough. Even as prepared as I was, it didn't change the fact that I lost it. Yeah. So all of the, all of the prep work in the world doesn't, you know, the reality of it is still enough. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you were given the gift as well. Yes. It was I'm yeah. so thankful for it because I've, I've seen a lot of people who didn't have that option and I know how hard it can be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and when you're grieving and there's a loss, um, whether it's the loss of a uh, life or even just the loss of capacity in some sense. Your, our brains don't work like we hope they will because right. you, you have all of this other emotion that you're dealing with. So it's difficult to think through some of that. Um, and I commend you for facing all of those challenging things and making decisions and trying to figure it out because it's a scary thing to do. And I'm sure it was not an easy process yeah but yeah 
now. now. Well, and I live in a state that has, um, but it has to be court through the court. I know that it is growing in many communities, but um, or in in other states, but I like Oregon, and I'm not sure off the top of my head which ones. But we live in a I live in a state that has medical aid in um, dying, but not for folks with dementia, which. Um, really irritates me. I mean, I can fill out a registry and I can make decisions to not be fed and all of these sorts of things with dementia, with a dementia diagnosis, I can do that, but I can't, I mean, it just makes no sense to me at all. Um, and I hope um, eventually some of that will change, you know, and I understand the pros and cons of it. Um, but um, I'm an advocate in that realm as well. Well, and I, I support that. I'm not speaking for PAC here, I'm speaking for me. Um, right. I do think that it's something that we have to look at. Um, we had Kelly Bone yep. recently did a conversation with us and, and there are many states now where people can um, do some sort of assist in dying with the terminal condition, but not with dementia. Not with dementia, right. So, you know, which, which is sad because, um, you know, I think there should be a choice. Yeah. And, and I think that more people speaking out about it. I know there are a lot of really amazing organizations who are doing work in this area. Um, yeah. And I hope that they're listening to people like you and like Kelly who will be willing to work with folks and figure this out. Right, right. Futuristically. Yeah. So thank you for, for giving us your time and for sharing. Well, for having me. I am. Um, important stuff. Yes, very important. And, and um, that's our hope with these is to share out and, and elevate these topics that are not so comfortable so that maybe we can help people get more comfortable. Right. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to help us spread Teeps' positive approach message around the world. And don't forget to click the bell to get notified when new videos are posted.